Mesdames, Messieurs, mes chers confrères, je ne fais qu'un très bref passage à la tribune, car je ne suis là que pour vous demander d'accueillir une autre de nos confrères, ou plus exactement une de nos consoeurs, Orselia Gorgani, qui est avocate à Budapest, mais qui est surtout l'immédiate passe présidente de l'AIJA, la seule organisation globale d'avocats qui regroupe de jeunes avocats, puisqu'il s'agit de jeunes avocats de moins de 45 ans. Je vais lui demander de bien vouloir me rejoindre, car elle va partager avec nous les résultats d'un sondage qui a été réalisé par l'AIJA auprès des jeunes avocats, donc des membres de l'AIJA, en collaboration avec le CCBE. Et elle va dans un instant vous présenter un certain nombre de résultats de ce sondage. Nous avons, pour ce sondage, reçu plus d'une centaine de réponses. Bien sûr, ça n'est pas, sur le plan statistique, un sondage scientifique, mais il nous donne déjà pas mal de réponses, pas mal d'éléments sur le point de vue de ce qui compte, c'est-à-dire des jeunes avocats, sur l'avenir de leur profession. Je vous indique d'ailleurs que vous recevrez les résultats complets de ce sondage dans le cadre de, ce, de, de, notre, de notre colloque et vous aurez donc ces éléments. Je demande à Orsolia de bien vouloir me rejoindre. Et je lui fais de la parole. 1975. Imagine a world where you need an appointment with a professional photographer to pose for a photo, where it takes several days until you can actually see the developed picture. No smartphones, no digital cameras, no chance to take dozens of photos, hoping that at least one will turn out okay. A single company dominates the market, both for camera as well as film. Do you know who they are? They were yesterday in the news because they launched a, a retro smartphone inspired by their iconic 1941 model. They were founded in 1880 and their brand was among the top five until the 1990s. So in this world, a young engineer, mere 24 year old, Steven Sasson, invents digital photography the process that allows us today to capture images without film and to display them without paper. It's the same process that allows us now to take photos and send them across the globe in just a matter of split seconds. Did this invention disrupt the industry? Absolutely, but not then and there. It took several decades until it turned the world upside down and ultimately ruined the market-leading company that dominated the photography industry for over a century. What is particularly sad about this story is that the invention that almost killed Kodak was born at Kodak. Steven Sasson worked for the company. They were the one who had the, the patent for the digital camera. In 1989, they created the first consumer-friendly modern digital camera. But they themselves decided, consciously decided, not to put it on the market. Instead, they wanted to continue with their traditional lucrative business model of selling cheap camera and expensive film. In 2007, the patent that prevented others from competing with them expired. And five years later, Kodak filed for bankruptcy. Mr. President, dear ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, according to the result of the survey on the future of the legal profession, 60% of young lawyers think that the biggest threat to the legal profession are the lawyers themselves. <laughs> not, not robots replacing humans, nor alternative service providers, nor predicative justice, no, but the lawyers themselves. 
their resistance to innovation. Well, this may be explained by several reasons. One of them is simply the fact that we are lawyers and as such suffer from the lawyer mentality, we tend to be perfectionist, skeptical, and autonomous. And while these personal traits may make great lawyers, they make it particularly difficult to change, lead, and innovate. Perfectionists are not good at the game of trial and error, which would be a prerequisite for innovation. Kodak wanted their products to be perfect, and they lacked the high-tech high mentality of make it, launch it, fix it. Being skeptical, in our case, is kind of an occupational hazard. We hunt for problems to protect our clients. But a negative mindset does not help innovation. Being autonomous and independent, we don't like being told what to do. But it would be important to listen to experts and learn from others' mistakes if our own mistakes may result in our disappearance from the market. There may be another explanation for the resistance. It's simply the lack of imagination. We simply don't see what's coming. Kodak clearly didn't see, they didn't believe for a minute that anyone would want to watch pictures on a TV set. It's very difficult to think outside of the box. As Henry Ford said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said, faster horses. Another explanation for the resistance may be that we are short-sighted, we are not planning into the future. Sasson estimated 15 to 20 years until the digital camera could compete with the analog one. So no wonder corporate leadership didn't get excited about such a distant future. Their scheme was not in the game and past success can make us, similarly to Kodak, reluctant to change and the, the traditional business model that has served us so well in the past. No matter what is the explanation for this resistance, this resisting attitude, if we want a happy ending to our story, we need to change the attitude. And that's the most important finding of this survey, change the attitude. Turning to the second message or result of the survey, 60% of the young lawyers say that although they are aware of the changes in the market and in technology, their firms have not taken measures to adapt for the future. Similarly, they say that legal training and education of lawyers is also not ad adapting to the new requirements. We seem to be trapped between two worlds. Like Sherak Bolden in Norway, it's a be beautiful natural formation. Imagine a stone twice the size of a man or woman squeezed between two gigantic walls of rock high above the sea hanging in the middle of nowhere. It's just a deep abyss beneath it. And we seem to be standing on that stone in the middle between the two worlds. We are aware of the new world, but we seem to stick our heads in the sand. We are clinging to the past, not willing to take the steps necessary to lead us to the new world. Maybe I should have shown a different version of this photo that I initially found. There was a, a sheep standing on that stone, desperate looking sheep facing the past world, but I'm more optimistic than that. Mm. So, wake up. If you snooze, you lose. The future is here, we cannot stop innovation, and those who don't act now will be left behind. It's no longer the big fish eating the small ones, it's the quick fish eating the slow ones. So, wake up. So what are the steps that we can take turning to the remaining findings of the survey? 
what do we need to do to become the quick fish and profit from all the possibilities that the new world can offer? I can group the findings into three. One relates to publicity and marketing. We need to rethink the rules and allow lawyers equal chance to market their activities. Most of them are having websites, they use social media and other marketing and communication tools anyway. The second group of findings relates to artificial intelligence and new technologies. We need to introduce this in our day-to-day -day practice. Four out of five respondents say that new technologies will impact the way we provide legal services as well as the price of these services, and already half experience price pressure because of this. Currently, only 2% use artificial intelligence in their day-to-day -day practice, but 80% believe that AI within the next five years will replace certain tasks currently done by lawyers. Also, 70% believe that predicative justice, the use of automated systems that can predict with a high degree of certainty the possible outcomes of disputes, will impact the profession. The third group of findings relate to opening up the profession, both to non-lawyers as well as to services other than legal services. Young lawyers say that law firms should be controlled large part by lawyers. They don't say entirely by lawyers. They, they believe that law firms will engage in multidisciplinary partnerships, allowing non-lawyers to become partners, as well as allowing law firms to provide services other than legal services. And in this connection, law firms will employ more and more non-lawyers to be parts of teams providing legal services or other services to the clients. Regarding alternative service providers, we need to treat them as partners and collaborate with them. Young lawyers believe that they will play an even greater role in the future, but at the same time, it's interesting, they say that only regulated lawyers, registered lawyers should provide legal services, so alternative service providers should be regulated. As you can hear or see, there are lots of things to consider and do, so bar associations, law firms and lawyers get ready. I know that reinventing a law firm, let alone an entire profession, sounds like repairing the engines on an aircraft without taking the time to land it. But the good news is that we are doing it right now, also at this conference where you will see inspiring examples and initiatives. Also, bar associations and law societies can play a vital role, and according to the survey, they are expected to play a vital role in helping lawyers, guiding lawyers to the new world, while safeguarding some of the values of the past. The questions to consider are, what measures can law firms take to embrace the future and, and innovate? What can uh, what protections can the regulators and bars offer to lawyers? And what training opportunities and collaboration possibilities can bars and other associations of lawyers like AISHA offer to lawyers? When answering these questions, we need to think outside of the box. As scientist Alan Kay said, the best way predict the future is to invent it. This future is full of outstanding opportunities. And with innovative technologies and new business models, we can not only become a bright, shiny, digital version of ourselves, but we can also contribute to access to justice and affordable legal services to a big client base whose legal needs are currently not met. So let me finish by repeating. Change attitude, wake up, and get ready.
it is time to do so if we don't want to fade away like an old paper photo.